Hi you guys, it's been a while since I posted. A lot was going on. Um, there was um, a lot of mistakes in the beginning. So as I was going along, all the plants were surviving and then, you know, one thing leads to another and you just have to keep adjusting. But if you sit on YouTube, you'll literally get like thousands of advices. So this shout out is for Alberta Urban Garden. Um, I like Steve's approach to keeping it simple and accurate with a gentle spirit. And being gentle is very important. I did do a new thing. I used these little bulbs um, to create a, um, a vertical tower out of a Hawaiian punch bottle, which I think is so interesting. And you guys know I can't flip the camera because even my daughter can't figure it out and she bought me this bazillion dollar iPad mini and we still can't flip the camera. So I'm going to um, get the tower for you and explain how I did it. I um, made a grow room from artificial lighting. I'm in my pajamas. Um, and what I did was I got Hawaiian punch, which was a dollar. And I knew these were relatively small and I broke my husband's drill so I couldn't drill the holes. So what I did was I got a, um, I got a um, box cutter and I made like a little X so it could insert in and hold the water. And some of the larger ones, there was quite a few different ones. There was like these really fat ones and then there was like little babies. And they were just so adorable. Actually, I didn't even know that onion bul bulbs existed. I know. Beginning gardener. So the tower's doing really cool. It's like, <laughs> it's this contraption. I really like it. I have another Hawaiian punch bottle, which I'm going to um, try another way to do it. So, it, it, I don't know. I mean, I thought they were interesting, and I thought they were um, better than putting the seeds in the cup. So that's my onion vertical tower, and... We'll see how that goes. Um, you guys know that I planted those seeds in that big bucket uh, of onions and they said you can't grow them indoors and a lot of people said that you couldn't do it, but I did. And the onions are doing quite well. Now, whether I'll get an onion is a totally, that's why I did the vertical because I wanted to have many different ways to approach it so I could be successful. Um, then I grew the southern um, color green that's just one version and then I grew this beautiful kale and um, it just went crazy in this cup I started fertilizing and it just went crazy it doesn't look like it's really doing a lot with the roots so I'm a little concerned but I think they're a heavy feeder um, and I have learned that my daughter um, sprouted some broccoli it's just it's so adorable because every time somebody comes here, I allow them to drop seeds and do what they can. So everything's been cleaned up pretty much and it's really whittling down because I'm starting to combine the tomatoes. I did realize that there was a difference between this tomato um, and the bigger ones are in bigger pots because the top leaves become very ripply and green. And I took it to the garden center and um, Colleen there, who's like master's degree in horticulture, and she's just like one of the coolest chicks I've ever met. And she said, that's aroma. <laughs> and then I had big beef steaks, which I didn't know in the beginning. Remember, they gave me all those seeds and I just dropped them in the, in the dome because my husband got me the dome and I was like, well, it's never going to work. And there were hundreds of sprouts. Yes, hundreds. Yeah, I know. So these all survived. Um, this is a different kind of tomato. Um, I give it lots of sun. I'm going lateral. So she explained to me how to do that in the cheapest way possible because it's no fun if it's expensive. So that was another thing. Also, I had these amazing chilies. And some of them were habanero, some of them were jalapeno, some of them were serrano, some were cherry bombs. I mean, they were all over the place because they gave me a huge variety pack and I just threw them in there. 
And I knew there were chilies because I tasted the roots and like my mouth was numb for like two days. And I'm Hispanic, so I can eat a lot of chilies. So what I did was I separated each and every one of them that were compacted in a cup because I do put all the sprouts in there thinking one of them's going to, you know, probably five are going to die. Well, they all lived and they bushed out. So I separated the roots, which I did in another video. And I dropped those in a bigger pot and they're thriving and they're gorgeous. And I'm really excited. This is my first year growing chilies and they're doing really great. They were tiny and they're starting to get these beautiful leaves and the stems are hard because I did a wind a lot. So in the beginning, like I said, a lot of people gave me a lot of different advice and I got very confused. And, you know, Colleen always tells me, keep it simple, you know, and don't overthink it. I have my garden space outside and we just went through a blizzard. So I'm really glad I didn't instinctively or intuitively take them outside. And I've done that every year in gardening and, and uh, I would just throw seeds in the ground and Nothing really, I mean, it came up, but it wasn't like high harvest or anything. You know, I'm not as good as you guys, definitely. But I'm good in my own right. And, you know, it's time to take a pat on the back and say, I'm doing it. I'm doing it and it's successful and I'm controlling my environment more. I'm getting better um, artificial light. Plus I have the south window, which is just like right now, it's like 80 degrees in here. And I ran humidity with wind and these are getting really strong. And you guys grow all the time, so you're used to success. I'm not, so it's really new for me. And um, there's a lot of big egos and other things that are going on, and I'm just not really into that. So I'm going to get these tiny, tiny ones, and I'm going to drop them in that huge pot where I did those sprouts. And the seeds are doing fine, but I just want this as a backup plan because I need the onions. and. Part of the reason why I'm doing this is because <clears throat> it's not just an art and a passion and a hobby, but it's to feed people quality foods and to come and get it for free. That's it. I'm not wealthy. I'm not a genius. I'm not, um, I'm not any of those things, but I had a passion to give children uh, education and to let them come to a place where vegetables, me being vegan, non-GMO, no gluten, giving vegetables a chance to create nutrition in their life that lacks in the school system and what have you. So I am have a lot of different reasons for doing this and I'm on Google One and you know, there's just our Google Plus and it's like there's so many conflicting things. There's expert gardeners, you know, there's like epic gardeners and, and um, but the best people that I have found are the people that take it really simple and help you enjoy the gift of gardening and take pleasure in that. So a lot of people aren't gonna see this video, that's okay, because I have my own audience of people and I just do this to update where I'm at and how it's going for me and how you learn as you go. And yes, there's moments where you panic and you're just like, oh my God, this is gonna be that big failure. But you know what, I've only lost maybe, um, well, about 20 sprouts out of everything I threw in that dome. And unless you're a beginner, you don't understand that. And I separated all those, put them in cups, stuck them in this room, put artificial light, had the one south window, and that's all I had. I had no prior knowledge other than my father gardening, and he was just like a genius, and just did, he did everything from clippings. And so this was my first year doing it from germination to the cup to very, very happy um, plants to things harvesting in the room and me going, what? How did that happen? And it's just been so much fun. And my investment thus far has been about $300, but I didn't have any lights, any container. I had a small amount of containers. I just threw my collard greens in my metal, old metal pot I had that I put holes in the bottom. Um, I grabbed a pot in Katrina because I was a volunteer and I put holes in that one so I could keep it forever. And collard greens have always grown for me. But this year I had a different goal. And things have just been amazing. It, it's been an amazing journey. And I don't even see a lot of failure in which, you know. But I mean, I think I learned just from doing it. And uh, 
everybody said I was crazy, like I could never do that and it would never work and, and it did. So I encourage anybody who's new to continue trying, continue taking the chances that you might fail, you know, doing what you need to do instinctively. Don't sit on YouTube and just watch video after video. Keep it simple, like get a simple process, you know, be ready for insects, be ready for bugs, you know, know which way you're going. And as you're going, you know, continue to grow the foods that you love eating that bring you nutrition and educate people. And eventually that backyard is just going to be crazy. And I have a very small space in the backyard. It's small. And, and my gardening center is incredibly encouraging. They're very strict organic and they have a beautiful farmer's market and beautiful support. So, you know, without all those things in play, a lot of times you're just doing it on your own and it's scary. And when you start getting tons of advice, you know, it's like you just don't even know what to do. You're like stuck, you know. So I encourage everyone to keep the people that you feel you're getting support from in gardening and stick with those people. Like right now, my main people are like, urban um the alberta urban garden you know i love his approach he's simple to the point he goes step by step and doesn't like give you too much information because your head's already reeling so my point in doing this video is to show you how things can grow even when you mess it up and how never to give up it's a lot of work but it's worth every moment and you know we will get fruit you know we will get tomatoes and onions and collard greens and kale and um now i'm adventuring into like herbs and i've grown those before but it was just like i just threw plants from the gardening center in the ground i didn't amend my soil i would get low production and this year i just have really good motivations and those motivations are to support the lifestyle that i have and to tell other people my experience and I'm not into the egotistical crazy shenanigans it's just like simple people who do, are doing simple gardening and who are there to support you that's it no more of the other stuff that's we deal with that every day so my choices in my life and to do these things are because they're fun because they're inexpensive because they're um, encouraging, because it educates children, it educates people on being able to change their diet and say, I did it, you know? And when I became a vegan a couple of years ago, I just did it. And I wanted to feel better. I wanted to um, have a different life. And my husband's a truck driver and you guys know what truck drivers eat. And um, he comes home and I detox him and he eats vegan and there's no fight. So it just blows my mind how the way you eat can expand the soul and the mind and your spirit. And a lot of people don't understand me because I'm just so out of the box and I'm so open to like, you know, being you, just be you, be human, laugh, cry, you know, be you, be angry, be whatever you want to be. And that's what gardening is. It's, it's um, some people come at you all peaceful, you know, feng shui, you know, ish. And, and then, you know, you attach to YouTube and then, you know, it's all confused, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. If you love gardening, if you want to do it, if you want to build a teepee like I did out of bamboo and some string, do it. Like, don't compare yourself to people way up here that are like, you know, making oranges. You know what I mean? Just keep it simple. We want successful foods. But if you don't have a good garden center, if you don't have people there that know what they're doing, if they don't, if you don't want to go organic, feel free. You know, go that way. And just keep it inexpensive. Because if you start getting into money, it becomes something kind of artificial. So... You know, you'll see people and they give free seeds away and they exchange seeds. And I wish I understood all that. I wish I, uh, I don't even know. If somebody asked me for a seed, I'd give it to them. You know, it would be no big deal. So this is not to like judge people or to, to or to, you know, tell you that I'm good or something like that. I mean, you can clearly see I'm growing stuff. 
in containers, you know, things are it has nothing to do with it. You can also see on my wall, you know, that people say things when they come here. That was the point, that you could come in here and be a human being. That you could come in here and put a seed in a cup like you did in kindergarten when I was young. And you would see a sprout. And then from there, you know, maybe you would get a vegetable, you know. And that's where I'm taking it. I don't have all these raised beds and, 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 and you know, know how to grow watermelons. And I have acreage that I share and all this stuff. And my husband and I are going off the grid. But that's not the point. The point is to, like, you know, be you. Just stay you. Stay real. Be. Don't try to compare yourself to other people. Go to the people that give you, you know, love and support to learn and grow and educate. When you see egotistical people with lots of followers and you get all sucked in, don't do it. Just like go to the people that, that nourish you as a gardener who wants to be, you know, be. I am here today to be. I'm not here today to um, attach myself or, or to limit myself or, you know, when I limit myself, I limit you. When I judge myself, I judge you. So I don't have makeup on. Um, I don't wear fancy clothes. I, I don't, I'm not into that. I'm not into that. But there's people that are so loving in the gardening world. And then there's people that are there to sell stuff. And there's people there with egotistical. And there's people there with tons of viewers and they have all this like limitations. No, there's no limit. Love has no limit. And that's just my feeling on it. And people that truly love gardening remember where they came from and they know where they're going. And they appreciate you and the little baby steps that we have. So I still don't know how to flip my camera. I have no high production songs on. I have none of that. And that's just because I don't, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care enough. And if... I only care about what I'm doing here with real people. So don't get caught up in that and don't feel weird and don't feel out of the loop or anything like that. Just be you and be real and like, and just love, you know, love what's going on for yourself and love others and appreciate what they're doing and appreciate yourself and don't judge yourself um, because we're learning. And if nobody wants to go with that, that's on them, you know, and stick with the winners. And the winners are not who's growing the biggest cantaloupe. The winners are the people who see that you struggle with what a, which plant is this? Or I grew two tomatoes and I don't know what it is. And I can't tell you how much support and love I've gotten from Alberta Urban Garden um, and how delicate and simple and clean and crisp his advice has been. So this is really a shout out to him. And the experience I've had um, with him and that experience. So whoever that is and wherever they're at, it doesn't matter. It's just mad love all over the place. So let's go through and look at some things. Um, these are the tomatoes. They said I'd never grow. I couldn't separate them. And there's some of that Chinese cabbage. I could give you the you know, official Latin name and... Me being a 4.0, of course I would say that. Here's all those chilies. <clears throat> Here's a beautiful basil. Where is that? Oh, there it is. There's the pretty basil. It's so pretty. There's um, all the chilies that I separated, and they're happy. Um, there's some more tomatoes, of course. And then there's all these tomatoes. Hopefully we'll make a nice tomato salad. Some chilies, tomatoes, some kale, some romano beans, and onions are going in there. Now I'm using bulbs. And then there's the window seal that has all the other little babies. And then there's Jimmy the dog. So I'm here to say <clears throat> love yourself enough. If you like vegetables, if you like food, if you like growing your own stuff, if you like to be real and keep it down to earth and all that, just be you. Don't even sweat it. Don't even freak out. If you start to freak out, you know, just, just, wooza, you know, and be you. That's all. Preparing the garden outside. I'm going to amend the soil. I'm going to drop basil in with the tomatoes, and that's how I'm going. And nobody's going to talk me out of it. So this is fun, and I love it. 
I ran humidity today. I did a bunch of stuff. I'm hitting stuff with wind so it gets ready for outside. I did the onion tower today. And, um, and I'm happy, you guys. I'm happy. And this is what I'm doing. So, peace. Have fun.